Praise God. Hallelujah. We have a wonderful Father Hallelujah. who created us and knows what is best for us. And um, sometimes, like every child, some of the instruction he gives, we kind of struggle with it. But God is God, and he wants to help, so help us. Praise the Lord. Um, welcome everybody online and um, those of us in church. It's lovely to see you guys again. Can somebody smile at me? Yay. Even behind the mask. Yay. Hallelujah. Um, I needed to pick up one or two things from the Bible reading. Um, the, the verse that says that uh, if an unmarried, uh, an unbelieving spouse wants to leave, um, no, uh, if the, the unbelieving spouse wants to stay with the believing spouse, they should not divorce, they should stay married because the believing spouse who is a believer sanctifies the unbelieving spouse. Let me say something there. He's talking to those who were married when they were not saved. He's not talking to the young Christian who is here now, who is not yet married, to go and marry an unbeliever, to now say, eh, I read that the unbelieving spouse should remain. No, be not equally yoked with unbelievers. So that, that scripture there is talking to all kinds of situations in marriage. Some people are already married before one of them found the Lord. So the one who found the Lord cannot now say now, because I'm a Christian, I want to divorce my husband because he doesn't, or my wife, because they don't know the Lord. God says, no, no. That's why he said, wherever you are when you were saved, stay there, stay there. That is not an excuse to want to leave. So for the singles in our midst, uh, God expects you to marry a believer. And when it comes to sexual intercourse, or oh, well, intercourse, okay, intimacy, praise God. When we hear sex, all of us freeze up as if we don't do it. <laughs> That's what all of you do. You're carrying babies up and down. <laughs> we are all adults, yeah? Even the children, we grow into it. Praise God. Did you see the pattern? It talks about marriage before sex. Before, uh, yeah. yeah, it talks about marriage before sex, then children. Marriage, sex, children. We don't do it the other way. In the kingdom of God, that is the way it is done. You marry, you have sex, then you have children. Now, outside in the world, we know that there is a system there that is permissive. But you know, we are special people. We are not like anybody else. We are unique because we are created in God's image and likeness. And he wants us to reflect who he is. And so when we come into the kingdom of God, you and I learn new ways of living our lives. Praise God. Okay, thank you. Um, I want to thank the almighty God for this opportunity that he has given us. Uh, to be in church, it's wonderful to be alive. Yesterday, I was listening to the news. Somewhere in Ireland or Scotland, a woman was just driving her car, and the tree fell and killed her. Another young boy, six-year-old, was with another adult. The tree fell and killed that little boy. So I want to tell you that death is no respecter of persons. The young die, the old die, the middle-aged die. So because we are all born, there will be death for all of us one day. But what God is doing for all of us here is to ensure that between the time where we were born and the time when we die, we have a tremendous time on earth. We really, really enjoy our lives on earth. We live fully and then we, 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 we transfer into eternity beautifully. Your time on earth is, is your only opportunity to design your eternity. Nobody can design eternity for you but yourself. So when you come to church, what God does is to give you the privilege to design your own future. Isn't that wonderful? Because in eternity, you can't blame me, I can't blame you. You have 24 hours, I have 24 hours. All human beings from any culture, age or gender, 
we all have the same amount of time, 24 hours. So those who make it and those who don't, then depends on how they use their 24 hours. So I pray that you and I will use our 24 hours to buy for us the beauty that is in this world. You know the world is beautiful? Yeah. Irrespective of the, the evil that is there now, God is a beautiful God and he created a beautiful earth. And he wants you to enjoy it. Praise you, the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we want to thank you. Thank you, thank you. Because you are a beautiful God. You are a beautiful God. You created the best of everything. And you, you the creator, you saw that that which you have created was very good in your own eye. Not in the estimation or judgment of man. You, the creator, finished your creation. And you stepped back and you took a look at it. And you pronounced and said, it is very good. So, Lord, we believe. And we know that the earth that you created is very good. The problem that we are having is not yours. It is the management of human beings. Lord, we thank you because even we, your creation, we, you know, we, the, the product, we are also very good. You made us very good and we accept ourselves like that. But we want to thank you because the damage that we have encountered on the earth, the reason why you have called us is to put us right again. Thank you, everlasting Father. Holy Spirit, open our ears. Open our hearts. Open our understanding. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. I pray that you will take something home, okay, this morning. We're going to be talking about the purpose for living, part three. Purpose for living, part three. We, I, I have been, others of my colleagues have spoken about this uh, at different times. But I want to follow the pattern that was given to me from the beginning. We, we, we define purpose. This month is a month of purpose and it's the last Sunday of the month. It comes so quickly, isn't it? And we only have four weeks in every month, some months five, to talk about the things of God. Um, so you can imagine, what can four messages do if you don't go back to your Bibles, to the messages that you hear, to study it, to know it for yourself? So what we do, we sow seeds. The seed that God sows into your life it is your responsibility and my responsibility to go and water it. God is a farmer. I'm standing here as a farmer. We are sowing seeds into your life and my life. Take that seed. Go home. Water it. Look at the scriptures. Examine it. Ask questions. And God will grow you. The church can't grow you. We, give, we are an enabling environment. We enable you to become who you want to be based on what you want to do with your own life. Praise God. So purpose for living. Why, did, why, why was it necessary for God to create you? Why, why did God look from heaven and saw you, 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 and you, and myself, and then decided to create us? Why? And we said that purpose is the reason why something was made or created. Uh, purpose, if I have a purpose, I have a goal. You had a purpose for living home. You wanted to come to church, and you came, and you are here. There must be purpose in everything we do in 2022. We must ask, we must then look at our actions and our response based on the purposes that we have set. Well, I want to believe according to the will of God. Okay, praise God. So we looked at that. And then we talked about that purpose is of God because the designer is the one who, who determines the, the purpose for that, that particular design. The creator designed it. So purposes of God. And I believe you agree with me. So we talked about that uh, purposes can be accepted. So if God created me, not if. I don't want to use that word. You know, when the devil wants to put doubt in your heart, he says, if. Did God really say? No. God created us. So because God created us, we accept that his purpose is why he made us. Once we have accepted that, I think we are in a comfortable place not to struggle with him because we didn't make ourselves. So once I accept that God's purpose for my life is the reason why he made me, that's comfortable. That's a very good place to start. So we talked about purposes can be accepted, but some people rejected the purpose. You might decide that God created me. He wanted me to do something. Hey, I don't want to do it. You have the choice and you have the right to do that. 
Because when God gave you a will, God is not going to temper with your will. That's why he says in Isaiah 1, 19, I think, if you are willing, if you are willing, it takes your will, your will to, to, to align with God, to agree with God, to partner with God. Though you are a creation of God, though you are a product of God, God says this is what I want to, you to do, you might reject God's purpose and you have the right to do that. But you don't, do not control the outcomes. The, the outcome or the result of rejecting God is outside your control. Okay, so, but again, you can accept the purpose of God, but because of not being certain, not being focused, not, not really taking it seriously, it might be lost. So we talked about purpose can be lost. And quickly now, we want to look at how to find purpose. But before we talk about how to find purpose, there are some questions I want us to write. There are some questions I want us to write that we go home, that we help us. If you have found your purpose and you are running in it, very good. Uh, there are dispensations. When I mean dispensations, there are seasons in life. The purpose that you may have discovered through God at certain time may change as you go along. So just write this question, these questions down. What are my talents? I'm looking for purpose. What are my talents? What am I good at? What would I like to do with my life? You have to ask that question. You, you, you know, what will I like to do with my life? What do I most enjoy doing? What do I most enjoy doing? What have I, you know, what has been my lifelong dream? What have I been dreaming about? I don't know what your dream is. You know, I, you, I have many, but uh, I won't tell you so that, um, praise God. That's private to me, but it, that is not, well, it's part of me enjoying the earth. Uh, uh, God does not want you not to enjoy because you are working in his purpose. If you walk in the purpose of God, the best enjoyment you can have is working in the purpose of God. Um, what idea do I have that refuses to go away or keep recurring in my mind? I have an idea, but it's refusing to go away. This idea has been tugging at my heart for many years. It's time to look at it, to see, is that the purpose what, what, why God has called you? What have I always wanted to do but never thought I could be able to do? And what injustices make me so angry that I must do something to alleviate it? What injustices on the earth in society do you see? And when you see it, you hear it, and your spirit is angered. Could it be that's the purpose? God wants you to solve that thing that is making you angry. Okay, so that's the purpose. Um, for example, the injustice that makes me angry is violence against women. Yeah, I want to do something about it. Uh, it's oppression of children or, or you know, or, yeah, or, you know, the vulnerable. Um, any injustice, you know, against especially the vulnerable makes me angry. Okay, now there are some questions we must ask, uh, five of them in number. Who am I? Who am I? And that's the question of identity. And until we discover who we are, we cannot really be purposeful. Uh, so how do I discover who I, I am? I must somehow have an encounter with myself and my creator. To discover who I am, the society cannot tell me. Even my parents can't tell me because they don't really, really know. Uh, Friends can't tell me. The social media can't tell me. Do you know that human nature, we, we injure one another. We damage one another. And we are not quick to make people really proud of themselves. We are quick to want to, you know, cause some people, people to be, you know, to be their heads bow. Because of the way we have learned in society. So, for you to get the truth of who you are, you really need to go to your maker, God. So you need to have an encounter with your creator. There is no middleman. It's between you and God who created you. What he will tell me is different from what he will tell you. Or how he wants me to go about it will be different from how he wants you to go about it. You really need to have an encounter with your maker, which will help you to understand that you are not a mistake. Some of us, because of the circumstances of our birth, we think we are a mistake. Things happen. God planned this earth. 
But as a result of man, we make all kinds of mistakes. And then babies come from these mistakes. But these babies, they are not the mistakes. It's the adult's mistakes, not the baby's mistakes. So any person, no matter the circumstances of your birth, you are not a mistake. Until you encounter God, whether your, your circumstances is the, is the original intent, which is God's way, your parents married, they had intercourse, and you came. Beautiful, that's how God wants it. But if yours is not like that, your circumstances is not like that, uh, when I mean beautiful, that does not also explain your purpose. So wherever you came from, you must go into the scriptures to see who you are according to God, not according to man, not according to your circumstances, not according to your race, not according to your ethnicity. Because if we want to look at, especially the culture we are in, we have the issue to deal with racism. That is one, one, one entity feeling superior, making the other entity feel inferior. Now, if you don't know who you are, now, ladies and gentlemen, those of us growing in this economy, you must give your children who they are so that they can overcome racism. Because it's deep. They must know who they are so that they can enjoy the color that they are weak with. You know, no human being chose, or is that the right word? Chose who they should become. We were all given by the creator. The designer sent some people to Europe, some to Africa, some to Asia. some to. So nobody has a right to anything to now say that because I'm from Europe, I'm better than the Africans or the Caucasian and, or the West Indians or whatever. So that is a theory and a philosophy from hell. So we really need to know who we are. Okay, we are, so we can only know that by going to the maker. You will know that you were, you were born to do something important. God doesn't make mistakes. God is so important that the fact that you are alive means there's something on this earth so important that necessitated your creation, that necessitated your coming. You, are not, you didn't just come. God has something only you can do. And if you don't do it, the earth will miss out. And if you don't do it, they might never, that thing may never be done forever. You are so unique. I'm so unique. So the, the only place where you can find that is in God. It's in God, okay? Now, once I find that sense of purpose, okay, when you go to God, let's look at it this way, to find your purpose. We are talking about how do I find purpose? Once you go to God and you read his word and you keep reading and you see how he defines you as a person, then you begin to feel worthy inside. Your worth is not coming from your earthly or any other uh, achievement. Many of us feel worthy if we have attained our various goals that we have set or because of the, the way we value things uh, socially when we when we put ourselves next to the scale of the social value uh, parameters, we find ourselves falling short. But when you go to God and you see who God says you are, and it begins to stir up something from within you, that thing gives you a desire to know that you are more important than what any other person can say. That gives you a purpose. So I know now that I am very important. Do you see what that does to you? So when you wake up in the morning, you have a purple, you have a, a, a kick, you have your, I don't know, you are happy to be alive because there's something important that you need to do, but you are yet to discover it. So you are like a, 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 a traveler or a treasure hunt. You are hunting, you are looking for that thing that you are set here to do. So that gives your day joy, enthusiasm, wonderful. Because you are searching for something, you haven't yet found it. And you are the only one who will find it. And the race is against you and God. It's not against you and your neighbor. So many of us, we are looking at our neighbor. We are looking at what's happening on social media. We are looking everywhere. Right, like, you will never find purpose looking all around you. You have to look 
to God. Not some people say look inward. You know when they talk about um, motivational speakers, they want to talk about building your your confidence in yourself. They say deep deep within you. That if you look within you, we only find failures. So you we have to because of we are by nature weak in so many areas. And when you see your weakness, you will not have the courage to do what God wants you to do. You have to see yourself in God, not in your weaknesses, not in your inabilities. Okay? So you need to look to the word of God, to the manual, the one who created you. Once you get that, that purpose, once purpose begin to, to, um, to bubble inside of you, it gives you a conviction, a conviction that you are important, that you are significant. That conviction begins to produce a vision. When you are, when you are convinced that I'm here for a purpose, you begin to see things differently. It begins to show you that you have a better future. So you don't see defeat. You don't see failure. You say, because I'm here for something. I mean, the earth is so wide, and there's so many opportunities, and you begin to see vision. That purpose begin to come like a picture in your mind of something you must do. So it keeps you going. Praise God. So it keeps your life vibrant. Can you see that living is not about my brother, it's not about my sister, it's all about you and your God and what you have seen. The picture that you have inside, your inner picture. It's your inner picture that will determine what you become. So we want to go to God and get that picture from God. Praise God. Uh, once you have gotten that, then now let us look at uh, the question of why was I made? So we are talking of purpose. So I can't find my purpose unless I know why God created me. First of all, Genesis 1, 27 and 28 it's so amazing. Why am I necessary? You have to keep asking yourself. Why am I necessary? Genesis 1, 28, 20. When we read it, I'm not because we know what he said. God created human beings in his own image and in his likeness. Now I'm going to see that scripture. It's loaded. The reason why you were created, I'm going to personalize it now. I was sent to look after the earth for God. The reason why you and I we were made. The reason, what made you, you? Why did God made you a male or a female? We'll come to that in a minute. Even your gender is based on the role that you are here to perform. So if there are gender confusion, please let's not be confused. Your gender, there are only two genders on earth, male or female. And God, the creator, made it that way because of the role both genders will perform here on earth. Okay? So Genesis 1.27, what did he say? He said God, and get, God gave an instruction after he has created the earth. So number one, you are so important that you are here to look after the earth for God. The whole earth is your domain. The whole earth is my domain. It's not just England. I mean the earth, the entire earth, the entire breadth of it, the width of it, is my domain. God placed me on this earth to rule this earth. So I'm very important. Very, very important. I'm not just saying it, that won't make you proud, but he wants to make you know who you truly are. Why are you here? There is a reason. God, God so trust in you that he made you the custodian of the earth. Forget about all the presidents that are ruling the earth. They are, they are just doing their own thing, temporarily. We are the rulers of the earth. When the Lord Jesus Christ returns, do you know that human beings are not meant to live in heaven? No. We will live on this earth forever and ever. And those of us who align with God, we rule this earth. Praise God. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to that. I want to be a president of one of the nations. I don't know which one that God will give me. Praise God. That should encourage you to live holy. Only holy people will live in the earth that is coming. Are we understanding it? So, then, why am I here? I said, I was sent to look. Then I was sent to add value. To be in control of my environment. And to let there be order. I am very, very significant. 
I was sent to add value. It says, be fruitful, multiply, do what? Replenish. So in other words, the fact that I'm alive, I am valuable. In other words, if you encounter me, as many of you have known, I add value to your life. That's who I am. That's who God created me to be. That's who God created you to be. So you can imagine somebody that was created to add value is now destroying the earth. It's now killing, stealing, lying, destroying, causing all kinds of commotion. The reason why we see the earth so confused with all this natural disaster is man has lost his purpose. You and I were created to add value. A man was created to add value to the life of a woman. Imagine now killing the woman that you are meant to add value to her life. If you encounter a man as a woman, he should add value, value to your life. And if you encounter a woman as a man, she should add value to your life. If they are not adding value, you've missed purpose. And that's why it is critical. If you are not yet married, I'm warning all of you now, I know what I'm talking about. To find a Christian man who already knows his purpose, that he is created to add value. I'm not talking about somebody just attending church. Before I marry, I knew who I wanted to marry. I said, if it is not a Christian, it doesn't matter. You can't. All of you now, you are looking for beard, height, the, excuse me, makes for me, if he doesn't know God, he may be the most handsome demon. I don't want. After that, he must know God to the point that he himself wants to serve God by himself. See the example there. You don't need to tell him to come to church. He will find his way to church. He will find his way to God. And if he finds his way to God, ah, trust, you will have peace. And the same thing with the man. If you go and carry a yahoo yahoo woman, doesn't know her vision, doesn't know where she's going or coming. Imagine two confused people. The environment will be confused. And the children that will come into that environment will be confused. So lost purpose. May you not lose your purpose in Jesus' name. So can you see why you came? Genesis 2.5. God said God put the man in the garden to cultivate. Oh, hallelujah. I was born to cultivate things. You know, if a, a gardener cultivates, bring beauty out of nothing. You know, when a gardener gets into a garden, you can see a flat, plain ground. By the time you finish, you begin to see beautiful roses coming out because that garden has been cultivated. God put Adam in the garden and said, cultivate, cultivate the ground. Which means you are to cultivate your environment. You are to make your environment beautiful, peaceful, loving. When people come in, they should see the fragrance or smell the fragrance of God. Their lives must be good. You cultivate. Do you know that it is, if you are going to cultivate, you are going to get dirty? Anybody cultivating without putting his hand on the soil? Anybody, have you ever seen a farmer who is so put together? His clothes are white. He doesn't want anything to stain him at all. He just says, I'm a farmer. He doesn't touch the grass. He will not touch the soil. His hands are not dirty. When you are farming, you wear well-eating well 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 boots. You are dirty. Your hands are everything. You, you have to get involved. So the one who is going to cultivate the earth must be involved with God. You cannot say I'm a cultivator without coming to the one who is the husband man. Say God is the husband man. He is the, he is the owner of the ground that you want to cultivate. Any life you want to cultivate, you need God to help you to cultivate it. So your hand must be on the plow with the God who wants you to cultivate. We are talking about purpose. So if I'm not cultivating something, something is wrong. If I'm in this church, House of Joy for All Nations, 11 years, we have been cultivating. I know that. People have come, 19 years we've been, not 11, 19. People have come and passed through this church and they have been cultivated. No one who comes here, who stays, who abides, does not see the impact of the presence of God in their lives. We cultivate people. We are in purpose. Praise God. So, purpose for living. 
Now, when we are talking about cultivating people, it doesn't mean that you have to be a pastor. That's the title. Not all pastors are pastors according to God. That's a title. A bishop is a title. No, you can be an engineer. You can be a doctor. You can be uh, a business magnet. And but yet you are cultivating for God in that environment where you are. You can be a teacher. You can be a, a, a social care worker, a, a, a bus driver, a, a whatever for the council. It doesn't matter where you are working, but you are cultivating that environment. You are cultivating that environment. You are there bringing value to that place. Don't just go to work because you are going to work. You bring value to wherever you go. Whether you are a member of a church, you bring value. I ask some people, when you leave, will we feel your presence or, or your absence? Hey, do not let your absence make you, what's the word? Do not let your absence make you irrelevant. Because you can be absent from somewhere and still present. Because your value is hard to replicate. Some people will pass through places. When they go, we just said, oh, thank God. Praise God forevermore. Are you adding value? Are you adding value? Praise God. So, the reason, who am I? Then you really need to know, who am I? I am a good thing. That's what God said, Genesis 1, 31. You are a good thing. Look inward, look into God. I am a good thing. I've only just discovered that if I'm sleeping at night, I'll take a mirror, I'll look at myself eye to eye. I am a good thing. You know, I have to build my confidence. In God, in God. Genesis 1.31 says, and God saw the last verse. Where is it now? Is that the last verse? And God looked at everything he made, yes? And he saw, God saw. It was very good. God saw. Parent, I know what we do. You know, many of us are damaged from our childhood. We don't know how to, how to build up the inner confidence of our children. And those of you who don't have children, now please learn. We are older now, and we have learned, and we've made mistakes. Pump up that child in his confidence according to the word of God. He may be making mistakes, but we put the mistakes aside. We acknowledge he makes mistakes, we correct him, but we, we can't keep saying, you, you used to be, you know us? We curse and curse, and by that time that child is grown, it's all broken, emotionally damaged. So we have to pump their confidence according to the word of God so that they can achieve purpose faster. We don't want you to get to our age before you discover that what we are saying now is right. As a young person, you should grab it on time. God will help you and help us. Look at the message version of, of Genesis 131. It says, God looked over everything he had made. It was so good, so very good. Please, can you turn to yourself and say, I am good. I am so, good. I am so very good. I am so very, very, very when you get home, take a mirror and just look. I am so, 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 so very, 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 very good. By the way, if you are stealing now, you can change. The Bible says, let him who steal, stole, steal no more. Do you know my grammar? <laughs> grammar is another matter. Leave that one. I hope you understand what I'm saying. All you Cambridge holders. You are listening to me on the, on the platform. Don't worry, you understand my, my explanations. So if you are a thief now, don't let the devil say, look at you, you are a thief, you are a thief, you are a thief, you are a thief. Just say, yes, I know. I have been stealing, but I have decided to stop stealing because the Bible says, let him who steal, steals no more. So I will not steal again. So he looks at you, you're a fornicator, a fornicator, fornicator. Say, yes, I know I've been fornicating, I agree. But now, I fornicate no more. No more. So you can claim your confidence. You cannot be doing what is right and say, look, I am so, so, so good. God didn't say you are so, 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 so good in evil. No. You are so, so good only when you are walking in the counsel of the will of God. Because at this point, there was no sin. You remember Genesis chapter 1? Here, there was no sin at all. So a man cannot be living in sin and still be quoting, I am so, so good. I am so, so good. Yes, you are so, so good, but stop sinning. So this thing can 
be right in your life. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Who am I? I want to give you some who I am. The who I am of a human being. You know Jesus Christ, let's come to it. Do you know Jesus Christ knew who he was? He will stand and tell you, say, I am the resurrection and the life. Whosoever believeth in me, though he were dead, he will live again. He purpose. He knew who he was. I am the door. Whosoever come through me, we never, we never lose. He will go and come anytime. Uh -huh. He said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. He knew who he was. You and I must know who we are. So what is the I am of you? You I am. Number two, I am a child of God. We heard it at the, uh, what's it called, Sunday school today. I am a child of God. Do you know what that means? John 1, 12. You are a child of God. Ha, ah, God. I pray that you and I will know. I'm teaching. It doesn't mean that I have all of this thing together. I am still learning. I'm on the road with you. Okay? The Bible says, I am a child of God. Open heavens of today. Thank you. I am a child of God. John 1, 12 says, as many that, are, that believed in him, as many, do you believe in Jesus? To them he gave power to become sons of God. You are a child of God. You are not just the child of anybody. That son name that you are carrying is, is just temporary. You, you are a child of God. Your son name is child of God. Do you know why they call people saints? Do you know that you are a saint? Call me, please call me Saint Effie, Saint Effie. Ah, okay. <laughs> you, are, you are a saint. If you are born again, you are a saint. Praise God. Okay, Saint Joseph. There's Saint Joseph now. Hey. Praise God. He says to speak to all the saints in Ephesus. You are a saint. If you are born again from sinner to saint, the word saint comes from the word sanctification. Anybody who is being sanctified by the word of God, by the Holy Spirit, is a saint. Now, a saint doesn't mean that I don't, I don't have weaknesses at all. It just means as a human being, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I'm a saint. Saint Effie. So now when you see me next time, <laughs> call me Saint Effie. Hello. You to serve, you are a saint. If you are born again, you are alive, you are a saint. Praise God. Can you imagine if you know that and you wake up in the morning, oh my God, I'm a saint. Now, a saint, let's take a vicar or a priest with a, a long black dress and a white collar, dog collar, a vicar. Yes? If you see that vicar in Sainsbury's stealing cheese or stealing anything, will you not be surprised? Why will a vicar... Do you expect a vicar with that? So when a vicar that is wearing that robe is very cautious of what he does. Because that robe is telling everybody, I'm holy. So if you bear the name Christian, that is like that robe, you know. That robe that you are wearing is the word Christian. So should a Christian there be doing what? That thing that we are doing, does it match the name? Uh -huh. Check it now. I know you are all very intelligent and wonderful people. So let's continue. I am a child of God. We know who God is. The parents give value to the children. The children also give value to the parents. Anybody whose parent has done wickedly and the news carry it, does the children not feel ashamed at home? They, they do. Or they should. Because, ah, ah, that's my, hey, God, that's my father or my mother. May we not disgrace our children in Jesus' name. But any parent or any child who does wickedly and is on the news, does the parents not feel ashamed? So we affect one another. If our God can never do wickedly because God can never be put to shame. So whatever we do that puts God to shame, it puts him to shame. So as children of God, we must not be putting God to shame. What we do must not put God to shame. God is a holy God. We must remain holy. I'm a child of God. Now let's go. I am a treasure. Do you know that you are a treasure? 
What do we treasure? We treasure val very valuable things. If you have a diamond now, where, where will you put it? Some of us will go and put it in the bank. We put it in the vault because we want to protect it. It's treasure, it's valuable. What is a treasure? A treasure is something of great value to be handled with care and appreciation. You are of great value. I am of great value. You should handle me with care and appreciation. And I should handle you with care and appreciation. You are a treasure. I am a treasure. Human beings are treasures. Okay, praise God. Hallelujah. Who are you? The I am of you. Another is that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. The treasure there is 2 Corinthians. Let me give you the verse. Please put your anchor in the word of God. The treasure there is 2 Corinthians 4, 7. It says we have this treasure, this treasure in eating vessels. So when you see a human being, it's not just me you are seeing because God is residing in me and I have a treasure. So you have this treasure in earthen vessel. You are a treasure. That Holy Spirit inside of you makes you valuable. You are priceless. So see yourself as valuable and priceless. Who am I? Again, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139. Verse 14, Psalm 139, verse 14. God says, you are fearfully, you are wonderfully made. Ha! The creator said, when I was making you, I designed your innermost part. Everything about you is intricately knitted together. You know, when we were younger, there were some part of my body I didn't like. If you are there now, you are not only the one, you will soon come out. You may be, you say, I don't like my head. It may be, yours may not be head. If I tell you mine, you will laugh. Okay. Whatever the part of body that we don't like. Some will say, it's whether my backside, my front, or my forehead, or my this. Because maybe you were bullied in school or something. Somebody just used a part of your body and begin to hammer on it. Then that makes you feel, you know, you don't really feel. When, when they talk about it, you feel not worthy. I want you to know that you are unique the way you are. Accept yourself the way you are. Whether you are tall, whether you are short, whether you are big, they call it big now, we don't want to use F. Whether you are big, whatever your size, whatever your gender, if you are a female, remain a female. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. A female has womb. A male does not have womb. And that's the way to know that you are a female or a male. And if you don't have, uh, if you don't have your chest protruding out in the form of, of what? Breast. Okay, let me call it. That means you are a male. Your anatomy shows us that you are male. Medically, scientifically, you are a male. Don't get confused. Please. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Please teach your children. If they are in the class of where people are confusing and they are coming out, and Thomas is now saying, Ha ah, la la, I am now Mary. Okay? Let your own know. That they are fearfully and wonderfully made. A Mary can never become a Thomas. Let us know that. So we can give our children peace and stability. The Lord will help us all in Jesus' name. Amen. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Okay? Who am I? I am a bride of Christ. I am a bride of Christ. Male or female, I think men usually struggle with this. Say, how can I be a bride? I'm a wife of Jesus. Yes, you are. If you are a male, you are a wife of Jesus. Because in the spirit realm, there are no gender. Eh, listen, oh, in the spirit realm, not in the physical realm. In the physical realm, there are genders, male and female. But in the spirit realm, the spirit man has no gender. The spirit man is put in the male body, or in the female body. Okay, praise God. 
You are the bride of Christ. 2 Corinthians 11, 2. 2 Corinthians 11, 2. For I am jealous for you with the jealousy of God himself. I promised you as a pure bride to one husband. Who? Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, the wife of Christ, the wife of Joe Biden, the wife of, we don't know how many now he has. Yes. One now. Married to one now. Okay, so we don't, when we say the wife, the ex ones can still stand. Okay. Now, what I'm trying to say, the wife of a president of a nation, who is she when she's coming? Does she come like a broken, you know, weak and inconsequential person? The wife of a president, in fact, when she's going to a nation, they will lay out the red carpet and somebody will open the door. She's the wife of the president and they'll say the first lady. Is that not so? So when you are, you are the wife of the creator of the earth, Jesus Christ, whether you are male or female, whatever your struggle now, know that you are the wife of Jesus. So when you wake up in the morning, my husband, let me tell you, men, men, you are created to solve problems for women. Uh, praise God. <laughs> created to solve problems for women. So when you have a rich husband, guess all the women are trying. Uh-uh. Well, whatever the problem, the man will solve it. Is that not so? Yeah. Amen. The Lord will give you the power. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please forget all this social upside down that they are doing. Put things the wrong side up. The man is the head. Ladies and gentlemen, let me, let me digress. If you are looking, why are we calling Boris Johnson if there's a problem in this nation? Because he is the what? If you come inside this church now, God forbid, it will never happen. And there's a problem. Who will you call? Pastor. Pastor. Why? The head. Is the head not responsible for everything? Men. So why will you not take your responsibility? The, you, yes, the man is the head. Is that not so? If the marriage fails, it's his fault. He's the head. He's the head. He's the head is responsible for, if he fails, if he succeeds, he's the head, it's his responsibility. Don't let society deceive you. If you are the head, then if there's trouble in your house, you are responsible. Fix it. Don't be blaming the woman. And please don't marry a wicked woman. If you marry a Jezebel, you are on your own. <laughs> Praise God. So you cannot take a position without the responsibility. It's not possible. When God created you, he made you head. And women, listen to me, women. Whether you like it or not, you were created for a man. You were created to help a man. God, you became necessary in order to help a man. Otherwise, you will not be a woman. So, when you are in the house and men, okay, I'm not preaching marriage now. You to self accept the help. They give you help. You will not use the help they give you. Will you not remain in problem if you fail to use your help? Can you see now? May we not be confused. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. You are the bride of Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. I will stop here. There's so many, so many I am. Now, the bride, do you know what's your bride price? Oh my. Do you know what your bride price is? Let us look at Revelations 5 9. Revelations 5 9. That's your bride price. And they all sang a new song to the Lamb. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were killed. And with the blood of your death, you bought people for God. Oh, you were bought with the blood of Jesus priceless blood. You are so precious that it took the blood of Jesus to purchase you. You were bought by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You bought people for God from every tribe, every language, every people and every nation. And look at that. And made them to be a kingdom of priests 
Do you know the privilege of being called a Christian? You are among the kingdom of priests. We are the only species on the face of the earth that occupies two offices, king and priest. There's nobody else. Because of the blood of Jesus. And they will rule the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, give yourself a round of applause. You are created to rule the earth. After the Lord Jesus Christ saved you, they will reign where? Excuse me, why are you waiting to get to heaven? You have to reign here first. If you don't reign here, there's the likelihood that you will not reign in eternity. This is the place to take dominion. This is the place to reign. This is the place you are to reign in your environment. You are to reign in your life. You are to use your time to give your time value. You are to work with God to become who God created you to be. Once you are able, this is a, a journey. Once you are able to really understand, okay now, the Holy Spirit has just uh, reminded me. I wanted to finish, but I'm not going to, I will finish here. I need three people. Please quickly, because of time. I need a male, two male, and a female. Please stand quickly. Technical ca camera, camera to catch these people quickly. A ma male, a male, two male, and a female. Thank you. Face the congregation. Uh, face, no, sorry, sir. Face this direction. You stay in the middle. Th third male, second male. Second male, sir. Come, God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Give them a round of applause. No, face, face him. Face him. Okay, face, face, God bless you. You are, you are, you are born to reign. This, these three people are the component of a human being. Yes? He is the flesh. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. It's fine. He is the flesh. Yes? That is the person you see. Inside of you are three people. This one we see. We see you, we see you, we see you, we see you. Is this. This is the soul that nobody sees. It's inside him. Here is the seat of the will. Here is the seat of the emotion. Here is the seat of, of what's the word now? Of the mind. So your emotion, everywhere you are, you are sad, is sitting here. The now this is the spirit man. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that man came from dust. You and I, from dust. There's nothing, it's just dust. You are something. You, you, you understand. But it's dust, Yes. So you and I, we are dust. We are nothing. This part of us, this body is nothing. It's dust. This is the most important part of you. It's the soul. When God created you and I, he breathed, in, he breathed into him, and then you became a soul, a living soul, and then he can move. Because of her, she can move. And this is the spirit that all men has, and the spirit of God. Amen. Okay, praise the Lord. This is how it works. This man here, Receive information. He's the medium. He's the medium man. He receives information from the earth through his normal senses. His touch, his taste, his hearing, his sight. Through his senses, he receives information and transmits it to her. So please turn around now. Transmit it to her. Now, she doesn't get anything he doesn't transmit. He has to transmit information to her. Okay, turn to him, please. Stay there. She receives the information. She transfers it to him. That's how it works. So he has been seeing things according to culture, according to this. So he is not in line with God. Eventually, that we are all born dead. This is not alive. You are alive, but I'm talking about the soul. At salvation, the spirit of God comes in and she wakes up from the dead. But now she wakes up, but she has a lot of things that is not of God in her system. Though she is saved. Okay, but she cannot function with him because he to self is confused. Because whatever she receives, she transmits to him. Anything that moves from here to there gets into your spirit and it is difficult to remove. Okay, so when you come to church, when you come to God, when you listen to the, the scriptures, expose this man to the things of God as much as possible, as regularly, because you want to give correct information that she will pass on to that. Once he's received it, he will pass it on to her. Then she pass it back to him. Can you see? So a man that is doing anything is also, the information he passed in is what he receives to act on. So if we have been living 
our lives against the will of God, that means we don't have enough of the word of God pass through him to go to her, to go to him, that he can relate back like that. Please give them a round of applause. That's the only way I can explain it. Praise God. So every time you expose yourself to the truth of the word of God, it cancels out all the, it takes time because the spirit man is like your hard drive. It has received so many untruths, so many lies that is controlling your life. But in order to put truth in there, you have to expose the physical man to the truth of the word of God regularly. And that brings us to faith comment. Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 14? Or? Romans 10, 17. Okay, let's look at it. Faith comment by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So now that you are hearing, you are hearing, you are hearing. That's how you have to keep exposing yourself to the word of God so that you can become whom God wants you to be by your head. Talk to the almighty God. I know you are going to chase purpose today, this, this, this year. God is giving you the tool, the tool by which you are going to chase purpose. God is giving you the tool to help you become who God has created you to be. Why don't you thank God, first of all? Say, Father, I thank you for giving me this tool. Thank you for opening my understanding. Thank you for speaking to me today. Thank you because I know there's greatness in me. Thank you, ancient of this. Let's thank the almighty God. And why don't you cry and say, Father, open my eyes to see that purpose for which I was created. Give me grace to be able to deliver on your purpose for my life. In the name of Jesus. Brethren, let us pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's say, Father, give me the grace to deliver on purpose. Give me the grace, ancient of days. Oh, I receive grace to become the great person that is hidden inside of me must come out. That great man, that great woman that will be a blessing to the earth in, in representing God. That great person must come out of me. Father, I receive strength today to become whom you have called me to be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, if you have listened to this message and you have not yet given your life to Jesus, it is impossible for you to know who you are unless you come to know Jesus. Because it is only in Christ that you can truly discover your true self. So I would like you to give your life to Jesus and be blessed and be saved. And look for a local church you can attend regularly so that your spirit man can be built up. Thank you very much for listening. Amen. <music>